Okay, so this is the next section in Chapter 5, 5.2, and in this section we're going to be talking about proving trigonometric identities. So we need to decide whether an equation is an identity and to confirm the identities analytically. So first let's start with an algebra one. Okay, We need to prove the algebraic identity and then that whole big thing. So really what we want to do is we want to see if we can get this whole thing to equal 2. All right. So we're not going to worry about the 2. We're just going to worry about the left-hand side here. So we have a difference of two fractions. We have denominators of different kinds on the bottom, so we want to find a common denominator. So let's do that. Actually, let's not. Look at the top. I got a little ahead of myself. That's the difference of two squares. Let's factor the tops. That might make things even easier. Okay, so let's factor minus x minus 1, x plus 1 over, that's a plus sign, that's a terrible plus sign. Okay, now what happens? The x minus 1's cancel out there, the x plus 1's cancel out there. What's left? x plus 1 minus x minus 1. Well, if you take the negative sign and distribute, you have x plus 1 minus x plus 1. Well, x minus x cross out, you have plus 1 plus 1, which is 2, which is exactly what is on the right-hand side. Okay? So, what you want to do is, all right, you want to prove, or you want to simplify the left side so that it looks exactly like the right side, okay? So that's proving an algebraic identity, and all we had to do was factor the numerators, cancel, and then combine like terms. Now, when you're doing one with identities, okay, um, again, let's see what we can do here. All right, let's see if we can take this left side and make it look like the right side. Okay, so first things first. Okay, tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Okay, so obviously um, these are uh, not like denominators. There's nothing to factor on top, so we're going to have to make them common denominators. So to do that, we are going to multiply top and bottom here by the sine. So I have sine squared x. Okay. By the way, my comma denominator is going to be sine x cosine x. Just multiply them together. Now we're going to have to multiply this one by cosine x over x. So I get plus cosine squared x. But we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Whoops. So I have 1 over sine x cosine x. Well, if I split those up, that's 1 over sine times 1 over cosine. But what's 1 over sine? 1 over sine is cosecant. And 1 over cosine is secant. Look at that. Now, I know they're switched around, but multiplication is it doesn't matter either way. So what we did there was we broke tan and cotan tangent and cotangent down to sines and cosines, did common denominators, used an identity, and we were able to get secant x cosecant x. Okay? Now, what happens when you have something like this? Okay? Now, again... We would really like, whoops, we would really, what the, get over there. All right, we really like to make that into that. All right, so, so I have cosine t over 1 minus sine t. And this over here is 1 plus sine t over cosine t. Okay, now 
if I could somehow make this one, if I could get a some kind of squared term here, I think we might, we might be okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by one plus sine t, top and bottom. Now what happens? On top, I get cosine t times one plus sine t. On the bottom, I get one minus sine squared t. Okay, the difference of squares. Now, one minus sine t, sine squared t, is cosine t. Excuse me, cosine squared. So on the bottom, it's now cosine squared t. Because remember, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So if I move the sine squared over, that's what I get. So that cancels, that cancels, and look what I have left. 1 plus sine t over cosine t, which is exactly what the right side is. So basically, guys, they're telling you what the answer is going to be. You just have to manipulate the left side so it looks like the right side. Okay, so you already have the answer. You already know what the end game is. You just got to get there. Okay, now, sometimes you can't do the left side. Okay, so we have kind of an issue here. All right, so let's, let's do this. Let's start on the left-hand side. Let's just start on the left and see what happens. So let's start with this. Okay, so I have cotangent squared u over 1 plus cosecant u. Well, cotangent squared, if you look back at your uh, stuff from 5-1, you'll see that cotangent squared is cosecant squared minus 1. Okay, now if I factored that, that's cosecant u plus 1, cosecant u minus 1, over 1 plus cosecant u, difference of squares. Now, those cancel. Okay, so now I have cosecant u minus 1. Okay. Okay. Now, that's about as far as we can get there. All right. Let's see what we can do with this. Because normally we could get from the left side to the right side, but that's not going to happen. Oh, okay. Actually, hmm. Let me see. Cotangent. Cotangent is cosine over sine times 1 over cosine minus sine over cosine. All I did was I put cotangent, secant, and tangent in terms of sine and cosine. So, if I distribute so if I take cosine over sine times 1 over cosine, I get 1 over sine. And then if I take cosine over sine and multiply by sine over cosine, I just get 1. Okay. Now, what's 1 over sine? Cosecant. Aha! Okay. They both equal the same thing. Okay. They both equal the same thing. But, we are still, <laughs> actually that's good enough. I think there's more steps, but if you can manipulate both sides so that they come out to be the same, you've done your job. Okay, there's more to it, but if you can get both sides to be the same. Now, obviously if you look at the first couple examples, when you simplify the left-hand side, you get the right side. But in this case, example 5, that doesn't happen. 
So in that case, you got to get both sides to simplify to the same thing. Okay, now for you calculus fans out there, okay, here's what we're going to do. It's just to prove the following identity. Okay, now what we want to do here is, again, see if we can get the left side to equal the right side. So we got to play with this a little bit. So I have sine squared x. Now I can break down cosine to the fifth into cosine to the fourth times cosine. Okay. So now cosine to the fourth is the same as cosine squared squared. By the way, you see this cosine x right here? See that cosine x right there? I don't think anything's going to happen to that. Everything's going to happen to the left of that. Okay? Well, you probably notice all these signs here. So the question is, how am I going to make cosine into sine? Well, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. But remember, that's already squared. This cosine x just comes along for the ride. Okay? So sine squared x. Now, if I come over here and I do 1 minus sine squared x squared, okay, that's 1 minus 2 sine squared x plus sine to the fourth x. That's if I foiled that out. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but if you, you'd have to foil that out, okay? Now take your sine squared x, distribute. So sine squared x times 1, sine squared x, minus 2 sine to the fourth x, because squared squared is the fourth, plus sine squared, whoops, not sine squared, 2 plus 4 is to the sixth. So I have this times the cosine. And as you can see, change colors here, this is the same as that. Okay? So again, when they're telling you to prove the identity, you're taking the left-hand side and you're breaking it down such that it'll look like the right side. So they're telling you what the answer is. They're telling you the right side is the final answer, okay? But you got to get the left-hand side to look like that, okay? And again, you got to play around with it, use identities, stuff like that, okay? So that's 5-2. Um, and again, we'll practice, we'll go over questions in class and all that stuff, okay?